Hey everybody, welcome back to Hobby Night. I'm Angela and this week we have a Codex Supplement Preview for you all. I went out to my friendly local game store and picked up the Space Wolf and the Death Watch Codex and I'm going to be meeting up with my husband here in a moment to be going over these two books with him because I really enjoyed going over the Space Marine and Necron Codexes and I thought this would be a fun thing to do for this week as they are brand new and Let's face it, I cannot wait for December when I can get the two that I am very, very much more interested in because it has my Death Guard. But for now, we've got some Wolves and some Xeno Hunters. So let's go ahead and take a look at these two new codexes. Oh, hey, didn't see you guys there. Well, while you're here, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share the video. All right, so I am here with John. Say hello. Hello. And we are going to go ahead and jump straight in and start with Codex Supplements Death Watch. Isn't it glorious? I actually really dig this cover, actually, for this book. Um, it is awesome. However, it is indicative of the art trend that you were talking to me earlier about. Yeah, they're definitely doing... I like, mean, it's still grimdark. You can't deny that. Super grimdark. I do like that they have this, like, really, like, terrifying this... interior. For millennia, an ignorant mankind has been protected from the limitless evils of the Xenos. Within scattered fortresses, black-clad guardians endure the long vigil. Theirs is a secret watch unsung and unknown to them falls the unmasking of hidden nests the driving back of alien expansion and the purging of inexhaustible swarms they are the shield that slays sick not bad not yeah bad. no that was great death watch this is actually so actually both of these codexes are ones that I'm very not super familiar with. I was going to say, technically, they're not even codexes. They are supplements. Supplements, that's true. They are supplements. To the existing Space Marine Codex, which is new for particularly the Death Watch um, in Ninth, because in 8th edition, they were a standalone codex. Yeah, I thought so. I thought they were a standalone. I mean, but all of the ones that are now supplements used to be standalone, right? Because, like, um, Blood Angels, Space Wolves. Yes, but they, they did the supplement thing in the second round of mm -hmm. codexes for Space Marines. That's right. So, basically, so the front half of the book, as you would expect, is predominantly a lore dump for those who are unfamiliar with the different factions, as well as sort of building out how exactly um, both the Death Watch and we'll get to the Space Wolves a little later are dealing with the entire Primaris situation. Indeed. Now, as we can tell, of course, with the Tyrannic War veterans and whatnot, the Ultramarines continue to be the, you know, the poster boys, not just of Space Marines, but of every other chapter that can possibly have them. They really, really can't get enough of the spotlight is what we're getting no. at. <laughs> I do I do want to compliment um, this guy. Oh my gosh, I love this dude. This, I mean, this piece of art is in general very cool, but I really like just, I always like the artwork that has the um, human like servitors. servitors, basically, who are always like hunched and crouching and crawling and just being like weirdos. Well, and he reminds me of, um, which Horus Heresy book was it that one of the Space Marines had a human menial? Oh, yes. Agero had of the Death Water, of the Death, Death Guard, Guard had, um, had, I, an initiate. I totally and had, forgotten and his name. Oh, I he had, was a neophyte for the Death Guard who didn't pass. Right, and, and so, he kept him, and so he was like a like a. Um, he was basically a manservant. Yeah, essentially, he was he was a more of he a was squire. This guy. He was yeah. this guy for all intents and purposes. Yeah, it was it, it's cool. It always does remind me of that. Ah, yes, the Xeno. All of the, all of the Tyranids. All I was of gonna the say there will be the much Tyrannic War art. There will also be the Ordo Xenos. Yes, definitely. This, okay. Yeah, this page this is, is awesome. This is my favorite page in this entire book of what I've looked through so far, because I haven't actually looked through the whole thing quite yet. But this is my favorite thing, because they have, like, a Necron weapon, and then they have a Tau converted weapon. They have this, like, Eldari head. For sure it's a dark Eldar, yeah. Yeah, I think they're using this dark Eldar head according to, like, what this text is saying. It looks like they're using him to, like, find, like, I don't know, like, 
information about the... I think it's a warp scanner. I think they're using the innate yeah. psychic nature of the Eldar. To, to, like, scan the warp? Yeah, to basically act as a sensor for either warp entities... Oh, I wonder if this is how they're trying to find, um, Or potentially, um, other, um, you know, other Eldari. But yeah, we have this, like, Tau, um... I, I don't know my Tau weapons very well, so we have some kind of railgun that's been converted for them. I think it's supposed to be a Satan, like, phase sword. Yeah, because it says it's a Vorpal, it's a sanctified Vorpal asset. Yeah, and the Vorpal makes me think phase sword. Definitely. Um, I love this, like, dude down here. Oh, yeah, this one right here, the mission-capable bolt shell sanctification unit. Yeah, this is not a gun. This is just the thing you put the, bolters, the bolt shells into to come out of this guy's mouth all sanctified. Well, I mean, Death Watch have all of the special like ammunition rounds right so that's well, probably speaking like of sword. speaking of the special and then ammunition. this is my favorite thing because they have a gosh darn like it's a virus, virus bomb because i mean because it says priority os effects mine designated for extra atmospheric use so um take that for for what it is at the end of the day and we've been reading a lot of horus heresy books recently so virus bombs have been a thing they have they have <laughs> istvan three istvan three yeah, and also, also just and this, then this guy. Yeah, just just shout out to um, this guy down in the corner. Indeed, just like cause... just the best page. I love every and, and every codex. The ones that are about their tools just really work for me. Just trying to for those those who care. There's your mostly no glare. Shot Indeed. For your lore, there's our cat saying hello in the background. And then we have, I have not, okay, so once again, I don't know the Death Watch, but the shield that slays is, is a not a descriptor I've heard for them before, no. but maybe it's old. It might be an old one. Yeah, I'm not really sure. Like, I don't know which of this lore is new and specific to the Primaris and, like, how they've been brought into the Legion, or if it's going to be more about the old stuff, because, like, Death Watch and, like I said, Space Wolves are two of the ones that I'm the least familiar with. Yeah, this this is talking about how their um, fortresses are set up and sort of how they have the power structure. Nice, okay. That is really cool. And then we have the different war zones that the Death Watch are deployed across. Of course, this is not all of them, but it is a good... Some of the major ones. Yes, the I'm going to mispronounce all of these. The Chalnath Expanse. The... Aragian Four, the Saints Halt, and of course, Cestus. Cestus. Yes. <laughs> what else could it be? Ah, now we get a little bit more of the special characters in the book. So we have Kill Team Cassius, who, uh, my understanding, they... I don't know if they had actual books for them. Okay. But I believe their lore is that they uncovered one of the first Gene Stealer cult-like... Problems. Oh, okay, because I do hear Cassius mentioned, like, a, like when I was looking through this book a little bit, Cassius was mentioned a lot, and I've heard them, like, mentioned in other lore video stuff that we've watched, so that's really cool. The bold text up here informs me I might be right, because it at least involves Gene Stealer cults, so I'm going to call it a win. Awesome, yeah, no, I'm, I am seeing that. That's really cool. See, the uh, it's interesting, because, like, of all of the three orders for that work with the Inquisition, um that are like the fighting forces for them, being the Death Watch, the Grey Knights, and then the Sisters of Battle for mm -hmm. like the various psychic heretic, or uh, demons heretic, and then Xenos. Yep. The Xenos one, as much as I love their name and love the concept of it's a bunch of different, um, obviously chapters coming together to work together and like learn from each other and fight the Xeno forces together, they're my least, in, like, they're the ones that I've been the least interested in. I don't know if it's because, like, in my past with 40k, the Xeno races were, like, less interesting to me, oddly enough. I think it might also just be that at the end of the day, the, the, you know, the Death Watch is still Astartes. Yeah, I guess that's true. Which there are a lot of Astartes already that, um, you know, so you already have a lot of those stories floating around. Yes, absolutely. So, and then these guys are just like, well, what are they? Well, they're just space marines fighting aliens again. Well, right. Aren't, aren't half the books already that? Well, and they're also all from other chapters. I guess the best, that, like, the coolest thing to me about them is the interaction between the two. Mm -hmm. Like, or between all of the different, like, groups. Because, like, I can't really imagine some of these factions necessarily liking the tactics of the others. I mean, I think that's the entire point, is to sort of learn and get used to the, you know, unorthodox tactics of the Salamander. That is now, true. And then Watch ne Captain Artemis. I was going to say, after that, before you skip over the poor boy, we no, can't no, no, leave, was... like, the one character they have out of all this. <laughs> of course not. Yes, of course not. Sorry. Watch didn't mean Captain to... I was... Artemis. 
your quintessential hero of the um, the Death Watch. We'll get to his data sheet a little later. And then we have sort of going into the specifics of how the heck do you paint and mark this entire army? Because once again, everybody from the army, as you can tell from the uh, the images showing the different shoulder pads. Yeah, they all have different shoulder pads. They're all from different groups and yeah, everything. all different chapters. I guess this is a really, like, if you are wanting an army, like, if you're a new player and you're like, which Space Marine chapter do I want? I would not recommend playing this army if you're new. I would not recommend playing this <laughs> army don't. if you're new either. But this is at least one that you're like, well, if I can't choose and I want to paint at least all of the various like shoulder pads or whatever, I guess this is Who the Who only one wants you. to paint one shoulder pad though? I just, I feel like some people really get into like the lore and marking of like where oh, they're uh, from I, and stuff. So like maybe that's like- I mean, that yes, absolutely. I just don't think for a first new player. No, probably not. I actually, I don't recognize that uh, tank. Is that- like, I'm sorry, which one? The This one. That is the Corvus Black Star. Is that unique to them? Yes. Oh, okay, cool. That that's is, a really, really cool looking That is uh, their uh, gunship, yes. I like it. I'm sure we'll see its data sheet here in a bit. Yes, we this shall. was also a very cool image, though. Look at them. They're in the background. I like them. Yes, they have three of them. Or at least they photoshopped three of them, and I don't know how many they actually have. <laughs> and, of course, fighting gene stealer cults, as they should. I mean, it is kind of their quintessential things to fight. And we get to the actual meat and potatoes of the book, the rules themselves. Yes. Now, unlike the traditional codex, we do not have any repeats or anything. I'm sorry. Unlike previous versions of these, like, supplements, we're not really repeating a whole lot of units. Um, which Correct. I think is good. Um, you know, some people would be like, I'd rather just buy one book. Right, yeah, that is the one problem with, like, the, the supplement style that they're doing, is you do have to pick up more than one book, but that's also really not new for them, I, I unfortunately. I, yeah, I think it's it's one, obviously they want to sell more books, I think it's also... It is also a really big game. I think it's also just a matter of, if they have one primary codex, mm -hmm. they only have to FAQ that. That's true, that is true, that and that is convenient for when FAQs do happen, so, which so, is regular. So we just have, as we have seen in the previous... Uh, codexes just talking about combat patrols and the basics of detachment Action abilities. abilities. Yep. Now this is different for the Death Watch over all the other Space Marines. You know, all the other Space Marines have to start right. in Devastator, and then they get some like options depending on who they are. Yes. The Death Watch basically can use them whenever they want. Oh, that's convenient. Now that's probably that is because of their the, flexibility. Yeah, the flexibility of because one of the things that for the Death Watch, and I'm sure we'll get into it. Actually, I'll just, I'll, we'll, when we come to it, I'll talk about it, because I'm sure we will. Okay. Yeah, because the other thing I wanted to continue with this is, but there are some limits to it. Mm -hmm. So you could still only be in Devastator once per game. Okay, that you makes sense. You can only be in the um, Tactical Doctrine twice for two rounds. Got it, okay. So they still limit it, so you still only get as much access as a normal Space Marine chapter. You just get to choose when you get yes, to use it. That which, is that is a nice benefit to And that is army. sort of the entire point of the Death Watch. It's if you can time everything perfectly, you're great, especially if you're fighting aliens. Yeah, no, that's absolutely true. I find it interesting that, um, cause like Gene Stealer cults are one of the ones that they historically sort of fight a lot or whatever, mm -hmm. um, that they they have those two factions um, have a lot of admin. Like both armies play with a lot of admin, I feel like. Yes. So I'm not gonna go a whole lot into the stratagems that are in the book, because honestly, I just don't know this army well enough to speak to many of them. Mm -hmm. However, one thing to note is that um, special issue ammunition down here in the corner, um, a lot of weapons that previously gained access to special issue ammunition in the game, sorry, our cat is very upset about this buff or this uh, nerf, I should say. Um, and what they did was basically not nearly as many weapons can take the special um, issue ammunition any longer. Um, in particular, I don't think the sniper rifles can. Oh, really? Yeah. And, That's a shame. And there's even some limits on um, so some other weapons that you would expect. Let's see. Till the end of this phase, bolt weapons, including sniper bolt rifles. Yeah, and you can give, so this is what this allows you to do down here in the bottom right, is it allows you to give a weapon special uh, issue ammunition, but it's it turns it into a heavy one, so, and it's 2 CP. That doesn't seem great. With the way special ammunition is set up now, where it's kind of been nerfed a little bit, it, yeah, I would say so. Yeah, that's unfortunate. 
Um, however, where things have gotten a little more interesting is in the kill teams themselves. So, once again, I do not understand the specialties of the Death Watch well enough to speak of it in detail. Right. But from what I've been able to tell is, while they have nerfed um, how many things can take special issue ammunition and how many... Um, and just how powerful that ammunition is in a lot of circumstances. Right. They have allowed the kill teams themselves to take some units that are kind of frightening. Okay. Well, that's nice. So they've... Yeah. they've you have to pay of... for it. You have to pay for it. And we'll get to it in a minute. Okay. Um, but I just think that's interesting. Um, and and similarly... I'm sorry. Is there anything you wanted to say about oh, the Oh, no, no, ones? no. I was, um, I was actually going to say, like, with the Warlow traits, like, one of the things that I do know about, like, this particular book um, is I know certain things, like... Or I at least one of the things I want to speak to is I know, like, sometimes there are things in these books, and I think we're seeing a lot of this, it, um that we're seeing a lot of stuff for Crusades specifically. And I think what you're trying to get to in all this is there's a Warlord trait here yes, that sounds yes. like it's for Crusades specifically. Absolutely, the optimized priority. Yeah. Like that one, we were talking about it earlier today and it was it definitely read to me as something that was designed specifically for Crusade because it's kind of designed to, to basically help perform an action, which I feel like in Match play is so, probably so, not So valuable. since we're just babbling about this, we're actually going to read you this rule. Yes, of so, course, sorry. Um, so what it is, is while a friend, it's a, it's a warlord trait. Yes. And uh, while a friendly Death Watch core or character unit performs an action within six inches, so it's a six inch aura for core and characters, that unit can shoot the same turn it completes an action. While actions are very useful, in competitive play, I just don't think it's worth burning a Warlord trade on. No, but in a, like, Crusade battle, though? Maybe. It could be interesting. Like, when you I... need that one troop unit to actually put down Bolter Fire. Right. Yeah, that can actually be a bit more impactful. Are some of the other Warlord traits, I think, still more powerful? Oh, sure, yeah, there always are. But if you're maybe going super heavy into like missions or objectives that are all built around completing I'm, actions. I'm curious sure. if it'll help with like, what if you're trying to rush a character in your crusade game to gain experience? Because I know sometimes experience and stuff is gained off of completing actions and all that kind of thing and doing other types of stuff. I'm curious, mm -hmm. like, and this is, this is just me completely hypothesizing. I have no basis for this like thought other than it just kind of occurred to me while we we're talking about it of like, I wonder if there are certain things that they've designed into the game like this that really are designed purely for Crusade because it's designed for like oh, yeah, we trying talk to like min-max doing your RPG style stuff. And I feel like that's kind of where it's going with that. I don't know. I just think that's kind of neat. Absolutely. I mean, we talk about that with every codex. Oh, so yeah. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Yeah, so I don't think that's new. No, it's not new. I just like seeing it continue to happen. All right. And here we can see the relics of the Death Watch. Once again, I don't know the army super well, so I can't tell you what the absolute best thing in here is. Um, however, when I was looking through it, the one that stuck out to me as potentially being like the, okay, that sounds just good, Yeah. was I, this one. The Dominus Aegeus? Yes, so this is great. So this gives, add one to the armor saving throw made by the bearer. So okay, most of your warlords are gonna go to two up armor useful. Nice. The bearer has the following ability. Aura. While a friendly core or character unit is within six inches of them, they get a five up invul. That's pretty darn good. That's a good babysitting um, relic. Yeah, no, like, that is a really good that's, babysitting That's, that's going to be worth like the command point alone to just buy. Absolutely, yeah. yeah no, so, that is a good one. So if there are others, and I'm sure there are other ones here that are even better, That's that stands out as pretty good to me. Nice. Yes. Um... We have our psychic abilities. Most of them are, you know, primarily based on, um, are they actually based on Xeno anymore? No, they're not. See, I don't know my death company anymore. Yeah, no, it doesn't look like they necessarily are, despite being called Xeno Purge Disciplines. <laughs> well, they're all, they look like they are primarily um, buffs. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, there's Severance, which is a mortal wound ability. Um, executive. Yeah, I mean, and this is the entire thing about Death Watch is that 
their special rules, their ammunition, their psychic powers is all built around the idea of, well, when nothing is on, we're kind of lame space marines. Right. And then we activate everything, and it's like plus one, re-roll, plus one, get bonus to charge, and we're totally. in. And now we're suddenly, like, way more epic because we've turned on all of our cool toys and stuff. Yes. Um, next up, we have the chapter-approved um, secondary objectives. These are middling, um, from what I could tell. So the first one is you score five victory points at the start of your command phase if there are no enemy units within six inches of your deployment zone, and you still have a Death Watch unit in that deployment zone. Okay. Um that sounds good, but you can't score on the first round. Yeah, which is... Well, no, you can't score any on the first round, so... Yeah, no, that, no, I, that, no you that's can definitely... That's normal for the secondaries. Absolutely, but... But the, the bigger problem is, is the enemy can really deny that. Yeah, I was gonna say... It's, it's just saying, oh, okay, you're gonna score five victory points, I'm just gonna make sure I have, like, a dude or a tank near your lines. Right, which is why it's a problem that, like... I mean, I know that that is the normal thing of not it's being able to you score. yourself can't do anything to help it. Yeah, that is a problem, isn't it? Yeah. Um, the next one... Um, doo -doo -doo. So if for each battlefield roll that was selected, score five victory points. If, you, if every enemy unit in your opponent's army with the battlefield roll selected mm -hmm. is destroyed. The problem with that is as soon as the enemy knows that, they can once again, oh, I'm going to save that one model and just hide him in a building. Yeah, these so far seem like very reactionary mm. almost um we have shadow operation which is an action based one and is risky and difficult to pull off right and finally we have no mercy no respite which is probably the best one but it only works if you're fighting xeno so do you think that that warlord traits designed to um go with that you know Maybe, but it's still not going to help you. Oh, no, it, I don't really amount. think it would at all. But, like, I'm wondering if that's what the thought process was with some of these things. Yeah, because it's like, it's worth six. I mean, not really. Yeah, no, you're it's right. It's not going to be specific enough because you're still going to have to get the unit up there. You're going to have to get the buffing model up there. And, and all it does is it lets them be able to shoot. But, like, really. And if you're mm. sending core troops, they're not going to have that good of guns. No, they're really not. And speaking of Crusade, our Crusade rules. Yes, I have not looked at this in detail, so feel free to pause and you know, soak it in for yourself. Absolutely. Folks. Now the question is, can I like kill him and turn him into a weird other thing? Like can I turn him into like a cool Actually, I don't know. Do you get... Does this army have dreadnoughts? I don't actually know. If de if I guess that watch... wouldn't really make sense since they're like a school of Xeno hunting, right? But well, then and you'd, they have don't... Like, you'd have like ancient dreadnoughts who were like really well versed in killing Xeno you want to keep around. You would definitely think so, but I mean, I did think that part of the thing with them was they sent people back, right? True. Like they don't have like, they don't have. They're, what I mean by Oops, that is. he like... died. Maybe we should send him back. <laughs> well, I mean, that. I mean, yes, probably, but like. Also, alive ones get sent back and everything. But I was just more meaning in the sense that, like, um, they go, they send, like, other chapters send people there to learn so that they can better teach their chapter how to fight those particular Xenos and everything. Yes. Next up, we have the start of the data sheets for matched play. Excellent. We start with a description of the new special issue ammunition. It's Still pretty good, once again, the fact that it just can't be used in as many weapons as before makes it a little less flexible, but it will still have its place. It does seem really weird that they did that, considering that's kind of what this army is based around. They still do it, it's just not as widespread as it once was, and one of the biggest nerfs that I was just to uh, speak to that is the Hellfire round. Because I believe the Hellfire round used to work on vehicles. Oh, okay. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. But when I was reading this, I saw that it works against anything that's non-vehicle or Titanic, uh -huh. which right. is mostly vehicles, but there's a few demons and such. Um, but the fact that that got nerfed is sort of one of the major... It still works on monsters, at least. That is good that it works on monsters and everything, but, like, that is weird that it doesn't work on vehicles, especially considering how prevalent vehicles are in, say, like, Eldari armies. Mm -hmm. You know, and, I mean, heck, even Orc, really all of them. They all use vehicles a lot, guys. Next up, we have the setups for the four non-special um, character kill teams. And basically the way these work, Angela, is you have to set them up with at least, um, I think it's four of like a basic unit type. Okay. 
um, and a sergeant. Uh -huh. And then you get to add different things based on what they are. Like, so example, you have the Proteus, which are just the veterans who are the dudes with bolters. Got you know, it. Your Makes veteran. sense. So you have to have five of them. Okay. But after that, you can then add in more veterans, more terminators. You could add a biker. You could <laughs> nice. add a vanguard veteran. Uh, you could do a Fortis team. There is one of these. It's expensive, but you could take five infiltrators and then get five eliminators, Ooh. which are the new snipers. Yeah, yeah, those are really There's nice. no way to get that many in the normal Space Marine book. Got it, okay. But you do have to pay the tax of five infiltrators to get them. Yeah, that is kind of pricey, yeah. but also very cool that you can do that. The th okay, so when Kill Team originally came out, I was incredibly confused. Because, because of this. Because of this. I was like, what is the difference? Makes sense. Next up, we have the actual data sheets themselves. Now, for the most part, they are mostly characters because the units are... Right, are all in this normal Space Marine Codex. Yes. We have your default Watchmaster. We have your Watch Captain Artemis, who is very similar, I think, to just a basic... Is it... Is he just a... Yeah. He is a space marine, not a Primaris. Okay, so he has, so like he has one, not passed the Yeah, game. so that's why he has um, five wounds to the six wounds that the Watchmaster has, because I think the Watchmaster is supposed to be Primaris now. They didn't Primaris Artemis? He has not crossed that narratively, no. Oh, okay. Fascinating. Cons I would have honestly, I really would have thought that like by this point with the new codexes coming out that they would have I might be them. wrong because like, for example, we have Chaplain Cassius up here who, if I recall, is, um, isn't he canonically an ultramarine? I think. I thought so. Yes, he has, yes, he does. He yeah. has the thing on his chest. Yeah, yeah. Um, but he has less wounds here than he does in the, um, I think he does in the ultramarine listing. Oh. Because this is earlier in his life be before he became a Primaris. I did not know they were doing that in the- like, I didn't either. I just literally was like reading through some stuff and that's what I had heard. Fascinating. So. That is so bizarre. Yes. I know nothing about this guy, but I actually think his model is kind of cool because he's a very angry librarian. Oh, he is. That's really cool. I like it. I like it. We have the only troop choice. I'm sorry, there are two troop choices because you can take the veteran squad or, or you can take Cassius. Because, yeah. Because um, yeah. if you want to take a no another kill team, sorry, just looking through this real quick, giving you a pause if you need to see those data sheets. Um, basic Terminators and a veteran bike squad. But wait, where's the actual kill teams? Where are they getting? Well, this? we we uh, looked at that on that one page just before. Yeah, like here. Yeah, yeah, but that doesn't tell me where they. Um, when you are mustering your army, sorry, I don't know how to make these normally. But what do they count for in regards to like, you know, are they a troop? I guess maybe. Maybe they just take whatever they are from like the other book. Potentially, potentially. Let me know down in the comments because I'm sure I was just looking at the page that described it, but I don't have the time to go through it right now. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm very curious how to build them as well. Cause yeah, you don't get a lot of data sheets. Oh, you can't- well, well, once again, I'm sure you don't need a lot of data That's sheets. That's true, cause you're because... pulling from the other- Yeah, yeah, yeah. so course, you just need the rules and then we actually have the Corpus Black Star. Yeah, that bird, the, uh, the, the bird, bird. <laughs> the, the plane that I really liked that looked really cool. Yes, so as you can see, it is. it can be equipped in a lot of ways. It sort of suffers in the same way a lot of flyers do in this edition of just it's toughness seven. It's not got that much survivability. Yeah, I mean, flyers did not can't turn out well, unfortunately, in ninth so far. Like It's like, they well, they just, for the amount of points that they are, for the fact that they can't hold objectives, you can get as much firepower with more wounds right. elsewhere. It's just, is do you need the ability to like, throw the cluster bombs out every turn. Maybe. 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 It's definitely on theme for the army, at least. Yeah, <laughs> but it, it's just like, it's mortal wounds on sixes, and it's just, it's a bit swingy. Yeah. I'm not convinced on it. That is fair. So, folks, that is going to be it, because I'm not going to show you the last page so you can steal my code. Uh, that is it for the Death Watch supplement. Um, Indeed, now it is time to go ahead and move on to some Space Wolves. All right, 
And now on to our Viking warriors, the Space Wolves. And going from an army I know nothing about to one I know even less about. Indeed, me too. This will be fun. Uh, I'm excited to look through it. Of course, our... Let's, let's make sure we're centered oh, on camera. Oh, I am so sorry. I am not paying attention. There we go. I shall read this one. Akin to the dark wrath of winter, of a winter storm and the swift fury of a cracking firebolt is their temper. On wings of flame do they sweep from wide skies in chariots of adamant. Their laughter is a roar of the sea, their silent tread the falling of snow and their icy gaze the death of men. So will the wolves of Fenris stalk between the stars until the end. Until the wolf time. Thank you, thank you. Very well. Beautiful. They are very wolfy, aren't they? They are. Somewhere Our introduction. introduction and table of contents. Of course, of course. For 10,000 years, the space wolves have made loyal, have loyally served the emperor of mankind. They are the Emperor's executioners. Yeah, yeah, that's not that's not untrue. They have always the oddest color scheme to me. I know! It's really weird because I both simultaneously love and also don't understand it and kind of dislike it. It's just never quite fit for me. The, the old, the gr art that made them look a little grayer and less blue always struck me a little better. Yeah, I was always really surprised when I was like... So when I was originally researching Space Marine chapters, when I first got into the game, Space Wolves were actually one of the ones that I looked at because I really thought they were cool. I was like, oh, neat. Vikings, they're werewolves. They like seem really awesome. I really liked their aesthetic. And then I like was looking at the color palette though. And I was looking at like the actual paints for them. And I was like, why is this all weirdly like almost babyish blue like it's grayish baby blue i think it's supposed to be like ice camo i get that i just i don't know it was always not ice enough and still too like blue sky a little bit to me like i like the color palette it just doesn't quite fit makes sense nope. i am sure that all the space wolf players can tell me how wrong i am <laughs> Here we're going into the first parts about their sagas and the fact that most of the Space Wolves are basically dwarf slayers, but in power armor. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. Yes. Oh, that is really cool. Yes, and, and the and the unusual double-headed wolf Aquila. Yes, I do love their their double-headed wolf Aquila. Which is an, which is an interesting uh, design choice. I mean, it's 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 pretty cool actually. I really like it. We have a description of the 12 great companies. great companies, plus the lost 13th company. I do love their names. The Grimbloods. The Grimbloods? These I... are the ones that got the new unit recently, right? The Sons of Morkai? Yeah. Yes, I do believe that the Sons of Morkai. Yeah, they look They're the cool. new anti-psychers. Yeah, they were really cool. But the Death Wolves. I mean, who doesn't want... I mean, I do actually really like that symbol. Sadly, there is no power wolf. So. Oh, that would have been perfect. <laughs> it would have. It would have. The curse of the wolfen, then, of course. Yes, which is not to be you know, confused with any other curses that any space marines have ever suffered, ever. No, and they definitely don't actually turn into werewolves. There are no Th wolves There are no wolves on Fenris. Warzone. Jahahid? Jahalhaid? I'm, I'm sure it's like Norse and I'm mispronouncing. Jahalhide? I have no idea. I'm gonna go with that. We have a poem down here in the corner. Oh, nice. Red did Ivna's fury wax. For war seasons did his pack rend and slay as blood claws. Let's get the art in the center. There we go. Joy was there, hunting from armored steeds, whose engines growled and his pack did follow. The corpse sea was sailed on Bragada Nine. Drake fire spat. Paltry shield walls fell. Glory did Ivnar hunt. His howl was Mjod fire. Keener did Fjoldal's sight spear. The wolf's eye did not see as far. Ever did his lord call him forth. Heavy. Groghen held still. Across his chest, spitting its bolt teeth. At the falcus node did his lord cleave the pack. 
Prey Stalker now was Fjoldal. Trisight. Fjoldal Trisight. Piercing was his sight. Further did his stride range. So that's a short saga. That's awesome. Poem that I butchered the pronunciations of. But I assume it's this guy with yes. his like one eye. Yes. I like how he looks like he's hugging this orc. Um, well, you know, that is a death hug. So. Yeah, you know, death hugs are great. We have the champions of Fenris. So we have the basically the great company of Logan Grimnar, aka you know, the fourth the first company. For the fact that there are supposed to be no wolves on Fenris, they certainly have a lot of wolves. Those aren't wolves. There are no wolves on Fenris. What then what are those? Not wolves. Big dogs? Not wolves. Okay, got it. There are no wolves on Fenris. I get it, I get it, I get it. Just like Magnus did nothing wrong. No, it is quite different. In the sense that there are no wolves on Fenris. And Magnus did do something wrong. Hmm. There's Ulrich. Ulrich. Looking like a badass. Yeah. The Black Moons. Yes. I do have, I have, I need to build him. You actually. do, you need, to have... you need to build Thraka. I know, I know. I have a, we bought that kid a while back and I still have not like built everything from it. Oh, that is really cool. I mean, the we... Death Wolves. Yes. Okay, I mean, they've won, they've won so far for me of if I was ever to do death or to play sp Space Wolves. I'm leaning towards Death Wolves as the, uh... I mean, look at that guy. I know. This is the thing. I really liked them aesthetically. It was one of those things of, like, I really almost went with Space Wolves, but I, uh, there was somebody else who was playing them, and I just didn't want to copy. Right. <sighs> God, I feel like the... the I just... I feel like his grip is not going to work out well here. I know. It's just... My goodness. I really, like huge amount of lore dump in this book. I'd say actually less art and more lore in this one than this the Death book, Watch. This book actually is a little bit thicker than the Death Watch. That book. doesn't surprise um, me. Yeah, no, it doesn't surprise me either. I mean, well, there's probably a lot more lore about the Space Wolves. I mean, I feel like they're one of the more popular factions that people play, so. True, true. Hues of the Storm. Well, we have light blue and we have light blue. I mean... I, I wish I wish it was a little more gray. I mean, well, really, what it comes down to is because their lore states that they are incapable of having second foundings. Oh yeah, they do. Just there, tend, they there all... are there are no other space wolves. You basically is... get to be light blue with a company. Okay, I actually like that. Hadn't actually considered like or occurred to me in regards to the space wolves because I forgot that they don't do. They just they just break the rules really, really obviously and go ahead and just have as many space marines as it's not they- a, It's not supposed to be that obvious. In the lore, what it is is they um, they just send them to so many places, nobody can get a good tally. Oh, I guess that's true. I meant obvious to like us as the audience, not so much obvious like in lore. Oh, okay. Um, because yeah, no, no, obviously they keep it hidden on in- On the down low. On the down low. It's that, but yeah, the reason they don't they don't do it isn't because they disagree with it necessarily. Uh -huh. It's every time they've tried, um, every second founding chapter, basically um, the Canis Helix, which is the gene seed of the Space Wolves, massive nerd out moment. Yes, um, when please it do it. When it is implanted into anybody except for a Fenrisian, and I think even a lot of Fenrisians, they go wolfen. Like, so how does that work with the Primaris then? Um, Have they addressed that? Not well. Oh, so like they have addressed? No, they haven't addressed it. Oh, I see. They've, I see. They you, have you not addressed it. You remember how when well. it all happened and everyone was like, "Wait, what about like the Death Company and the Curse of the Wolfen?" Yeah. Well, originally they were sort of like the Primaris have solved everything because Call is that good, and then the Death Company showed up with Primaris like in their ranks, and everyone went Call. Interesting. Okay. And there's been no real progress since that. Like, I don't think we have... I have not read this book in detail. Right. Maybe they address it, but I don't think they have talked too much about the wolf in Primaris yet. I feel like there's a lot of things recently in, like, in regards to the Primaris and also Gilliman and correct coming me in the, back. And correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely correct us if we're wrong. Uh, but there's, like, there's one thing that I've noticed in the lore recently is I feel like they keep starting some concepts and then never following through Welcome with them. Welcome to Warhammer. Also, men, shoot the blue ones! But they're both blue. Yeah, that would be bad. There's a reason why we have heraldry, guys. It's true, it's true. Classic battle, though. Classic battle. And finally, the rules. The rules for the space wolves. Yes. Is now, this... we have... You can make a successor chapter. I'm actually curious. If you are a space wolf player... Do you run as a successor chapter, or do you run as, like, the just first founding? 
I'm very curious. I, yeah, like, I'm confused by this because I really didn't think they could have successor chapters. Yeah, I, I didn't. I, I had always heard in a lot of things that I've seen about them, which is well, you notice there are no other successors in the book. Yeah, they don't give you the. I like, think they're just doing that so that people can, can if they want to. Well, you know, if you go into a tournament and you are like, my army is space wolves, but they were painted green, but maybe they were or like brown. You painted them like brown, like North American wolves or yeah. something. Yeah. Technically, if there wasn't this page, I guess someone could argue your army isn't legal. Oh, I guess that is true, because they do have very specific rules like, about like, canonically, I don't think so, but I think they're just sort of like, listen, if you want to paint up, like, a non-baby blue space wolf army, right. go ahead. Yeah, no, that makes sense. That makes sense. And this allowed it. Cool. Sweet. Oh, Whoa, nice. That, that, I'm, you say nice, I say I have never seen, like, that's getting a little clean for a codex. You know, actually, it is, sorry, it would, like, I like it because it's very, I they can put, tell what's going on. They put it across from this to try and, like, offset people like me. They did, they did. Although, okay, one thing that, and we talked about this a little bit off camera, one thing that I have sorely missed, as much as I love a lot oh, of the is art. is that supposed to be Russ? Is that? Well, I know it's a quote by him, but I don't think that's supposed to be him. It doesn't look impressive enough. I know, right? Sorry, continue. I, no, um, the thing that I was going to say is one thing that I do miss from these codexes that we saw a lot in the old codexes is all those gorgeous charcoal drawings. Like, I wish that there was a combination of doing the really cool, kind of bright and colorful, almost um, slightly less grimdark, I guess, um, digital artwork with some of those charcoal drawings like back into the mix because like they try to capture it with some of this stuff where they're doing like some monochromatic it's a little bit more painterly mm -hmm. they're probably using some like charcoal style drawing like tools within mm -hmm. the like photoshop and stuff for me it's not quite the same like i like it i just want the actual black and white charcoal drawings back uh, give them to me we have our stratagems of course Beautiful, beautiful stratagems. Just make sure you guys can see those and don't have too bad a glare. Yep, there absolutely. Our warlord traits. You'll notice how many characters they get. I mean, they've had a long history. I mean, they've had a long history. They also have a lot of some of the oldest living space marines, don't they? Uh, they have, they have, um, yeah, well, Bjorn, I Bjorn, believe, I know is, is the oldest. I think Ulrich that is also is super old, isn't he? Is Ulrich in a Dreadnought, or is he still... I think he's still... I think he was the guy... He's he's not in a Dreadnought, according to the picture. Okay, uh, then he's but... probably... I don't quite know, but Dante of the Blood Angels is the oldest living space Non, Marine. okay. Non-Dreadnought one? Or... Yeah, not counting Sang uh, Sanguinous. Not counting Gilliman. Right. Well, of course, but he's a Primarch. Yeah, yeah, because um, Dante's like a thousand. Got it, okay. Ish. I mean, by now, probably... If he has survived to this point, I think he's probably 1100. But... Well, we'll be able to find out soon in a month. <laughs> yeah, I guess I think he'll be in that. Oh, I think he definitely will. So we have their relics and special issue war gear. I didn't know Adamantium was in the 40k verse. Yeah, it's what they're, um, yeah, it's... I guess like... that makes sense. I just didn't realize it actually was, like, yeah, called like out. A lot of the, uh, spaceship, like, superstructure, I think, is... Oh, nice. Be... Okay, cool. Oh, they, they have, like, 15 different... I'm joking, but they have, like, a large number they of have a, fake metals and all that. A, lot, a large number of fake metals and a large number of just, like, super stones and or metals. Well, because, like, um... Because, like, like, blackstone and... Well, and ceramite that power armor is made of is technically, like... It's technically not metal. Right. It's ceramic. Right. Because it's lighter and stronger. Of course, of course. We have their not psychic powers. Yes, of course, they're not psychic powers. Because they're just tapping into the natural ebb and flow of the universe which may or may not be manifested from people's feelings and emotions of course mm -hmm. i think their it's... argument is it comes from like nature and you know non-sentient i don't believe it either. okay mm -hmm. that's that's fine yeah, yeah. all right now what... magic is magic now let's see what we have for their rules because i haven't looked at their secondary oh yeah no neither immediately i'm drawn to the simple one Score three victory points at the end of your turn if two or more units from your army are within engagement range of enemy units or have completed a charge move this turn. I feel like that's very easy. That's insanely easy. Yeah, like that's super easy so to even, do. And that's, and that's, that's that, cause that's just what you do as a Space Wolf player. Yes. Right? Yeah, I'm like, let's see. Uh, yeah, that's an easy 15 points, honestly. Nice. Um, score two victory points at the end. So this is for a Mighty Saga. You score two victory points at the end of each battle round for each of the following. You achieve 
Let's see. And then Specifically by your warlord. By, ah, so this is your warlord ghost hunting. Okay, that makes sense. That's cool. We have heroic challenge. Oh, it actually allows you to challenge characters in melee. Oh, that's really cool. And you gain points if you kill them. That was an old rule, right? We were talking about- That was about, a fantasy rule. That's what it was. That's what it was. I was like, we were literally talking about this like a week or something ago, but I couldn't remember what it was in regards to. That's really awesome. And then finally, glory kills. Um, score two victory points if any character units were destroyed. Basically, okay, so that's monster and character hunting. Okay. Glory kills. Makes sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Great. These, I mean, these seem very on theme. And I was going to say, these seem actually pretty good. Yeah, they actually do. Very nice. And we their have, crusade rules. We have, we have that. We have an audacious boast, which I'll look at later, but which is a great sounding rule. It really is. I will give you, the space wolves have some interesting mechanics. Also, forgive me, I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> Gesundheit. And I'm back. All right. Pack bonds. Lone wolf. The wolf and the lion. Oh, wait. Oh, is this... This is the thing we were actually talking about, where they have to... Where dark angels and, like, space wolves used to, like... Characters had to fight or something? Like, yeah, this doesn't sound as cool as it used to be. It just sounds like a minor buff. But it used to be if a space wolf and a dark angel played each other, uh -huh. they were to pick two units to fight in an honor duel before the battle. Right. And whoever would win would, like, gain something, and the loser would, like, lose a wound before the battle. That and it was really minor, but it was just meant to be more of a, like, shade thing between the wolves and the... Uh, I love it. Yeah. I love stuff like that. I think that is, like... I know, I know it doesn't really work on like a competitive level, but oh, I love that kind of stuff. We have the deeds of making and their crusade relics. Excellent. And we have their name generator, which is excellent. I am going to hope personally for Bulveye Frostskull. I like Bulveye Frostskull personally. I think that's an excellent name. Another Storm Crow is also available. Ooh, nice. Ghost Wolf. Ghost Wolf. Okay, I claim that one. Yeah, I was gonna say, what do, you do, what, do you, what do you put with Ghost Wolf? Olaf Ghost Wolf. Olaf Ghost Wolf. Ghost Wolf. <laughs> and now we begin the characters. All so of the... many characters. I've never seen that. You've character. never seen the Santa sled? I've never seen the Santa That's sled. That's Logan Grimnar's ride. Dude, that is awesome. Why is this not like something that they did up for the holiday, like miniature? <laughs> like, as well, opposed... a lot of people have. There's been a lot of conversions of, of Santa Grimnar. I am now going to go on Instagram and look that up because oh, I need boy. to see all of this. That just, oh, great. Oh, wow. I, you know, it makes sense that Bjorn's in HQ, but I hadn't realized. Yeah, no, I think I think I knew that actually. It's actually pretty cool. Cause I fought. That's um. I used to fight a a player who would run a mix of um Asher Militarum and and Space Wolves, and I think his HQ was always Bjorn. Yes, and he never went for objectives. He never recall. went for objectives. I kicked his butt every single time. <laughs> I mean, he killed a lot of you. But he was, did. But you'd always win the objectives. But it was Poxwalker, so I didn't care. <laughs> Ragnar Blackmane, having recently retired the oldest mini in the line. Yes, thank one, goodness. One day, Warp Spiders, you'll get your day in the sun. Oh, please. That'd be great. Harold Death Wolf. I actually know nothing about that guy. Yeah, I was like, I don't recognize this guy's name either. But this is the guy we saw, like, the picture of and had the cool, like, cyber wolf thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So what does he, what does he do? Lord of the Wolfkin. Mantle of the Troll King. Okay, so he's basically just a wolf cavalry leader dude. Nice. That's all he is. That's awesome. Cool. Canis Wolfborn. My god, there's so many characters. Yeah, he's the character version of a wolf lord. Got it. Okay, that makes sense. So is it just that they have a character version of each of their, like... I think so. They're also one of the oldest chapters. That's true. They have been around for I mean, look at the like Look ever. at the age of that face. Seriously. They need a they need a, um, some new wolf sculpts. I feel so, like. So interestingly, blood claws are still a troop for space wolves. Oh, okay. Blood claws are scouts for the space wolves. And keep in mind, in the normal Space Marine book, scouts became elite. Yes, but so there are troops here. So they still have a relatively well. It's still six power, so that's still going to be pretty expensive for a squad. Okay, I mean, that's fair, but still, that's kind of neat that they can still take them as that, though. Lucas the Trickster has always been one of my favorite minis for the wolves. Oh, cool. Yeah, no, he has a... I like his face. Yeah, no, he's he's great. 
That is actually one of the other things that really always attracted me, just like on aesthetic level to the wolves. I always liked the faces that they got more over any of the other factions because I liked how many beards they all had. <laughs> like it was, I was like, oh, cool. They don't actually, they're just, they're not like clean shaven, shaved head dudes. They all have like hair and beards and stuff. Next up, we have the Hounds of Morkai, who are that new unit yes. we were talking about previously. These guys are, they made Reavers maybe good. So they're basically a Reaver unit. Um, so everything that you know and love for, for that classic unit right, from 8th exactly. edition. However, they are psychic hunters and decent at it too. So they ignore Lookout, lookout Sir for psychers, which is pretty good. Yeah, that is pretty good. They also add one to hit rolls against them and one to damage characteristics. Which is great. So, I mean, these guys can get up close and these pistols are damaged too. Yeah. Like hitting on twos. Yeah, no, that's crazy. I actually, that, yeah, they and, are and, really good. And a lot of psychers don't have great toughness or even invuls in some cases. No, no, they don't. Also, they get the coolest helmets. They do. Anytime a Space Marine unit can have a skull face, much like a chaplain, mm -hmm. I love it. Now, add on to that, they basically can't be targeted. And yep. when they are, they ignore it half the time mm -hmm. and they screw up psychic tests. Yeah. No, these are, these are pretty good. I mean, this is a beautiful... You're running a narrative campaign. You're fighting Thousand Suns. Oh. This, I mean, the Thousand Suns player's going to quit. But. Yeah, I mean, probably. But that I when 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 the we were talking about these on the news video last week, I was like, the only thing I could think of was like, okay, so these this unit was put, specifically put in to hunt Thousand Suns. God, like, right. on a narrative level. Having not even play. read their fluff, I wouldn't be surprised if so. Yeah, no, totally. And then we have the Wolfen. The Wolfen. The Wolfen Dreadnought, which I know nothing about, have just learned exists, and I'm like, what? I didn't, yeah, I didn't, what? That's cool. That is cool. Has Murder Lust, I which mean, is nice. Murder Lust is great. It's basically just an angry Dreadnought. I thought all Dreadnoughts were angry. This one's really angry. Okay, I mean, that's fair. Four plus Invul Shield, because it has a Storm, or it's a Frost Shield, Blizzard Shield, excuse me. Uh, Duty Eternal, like, an, yeah, it's just an angry, it's, it's just an a, angry it's just, Dreadnought. It's just an angry Dreadnought. Nice. All oh, right. Murder Fang. Yes, we got Murder Fang and Which the I Cyber Wolves. Beautiful. We have the Thunder Wolf Cavalry, and we have the Fenrisian No Wolves on Fence. I, I just... <sighs> yes? Nope, I'm just not gonna, I'm just not gonna bring it up. <laughs> the, sky, the Sky Claws, which I actually just never have heard of in Space Wolves ever being used. I was going to say, I've never heard of this unit being used by a Space It's Wolf. Assault Marines. It's just Assault Marines. Oh, okay. Yes. And then we have the Long Fangs. Now, these ones I've, I know people use all the time. Yes, the Devastators. Yes. A.K.A. the older Space Wolves who have chilled out a little bit and know how to actually, like, stay in one place. Oh, they've, like, they're, they've calmed down. That's why they're called Long Fangs. Because I think I told you about yeah, this a little bit. Yeah, you were bit. talking about it. Uh, space Wolves have sort of the opposite order of training of normal Space Wolves, or Space right. Marines. Because yeah. they're like, okay, we can't put the youngins on the Devastator Squad, because if we do, they're gonna get hyper, run forward, and hit them with the plasma cannon. Yeah, so they start them in assault, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. To sort of let them work out those, those frustrations. They're like, please, go burn off off all of that energy, go just run into battle, slashing and hacking. Then they become tacticals later and eventually move on to Long Fangs. Got it, okay. To show and Long Fangs are their Devastators. Yes. Okay. But they actually are a little bit better because they, they have better weapon selection. Makes sense, makes sense. We have their Planey Planes. Of course. And that, in fact, with the exception of some beautiful art, that is a really, this is, this is probably one of my favorite pieces actually in this whole book, you know what? art wise. I'll go ahead and make sure we cover the point values yes. for the wolves. I'm actually going to go back and show you it for the other book. I think we... We did not show the okay. last couple of pages. No, so we did not. I just want to make sure, I'm just going to fix the focus right there. There you go. Excellent. So there is that, and yeah. let's just show... The Space Wolf uh, points. The, not the Space Wolf. Or not Space Wolf, the Death Watch, sorry. Yes, because I, I may have covered that at least partially. I think this page got shown. Yeah, I think that page got shown. But, but I, I don't think this page Which is probably shown. important for them, actually, now that we now that I look at it, because yes, it's the, the weapon, weapon profile. profile. So you have that as well. And finally, I did look it up. I understand all the kill teams are troops. I did find that sentence. Yes. Just wanted to call that out, but I'm sure there's already something in the comments. 
Um, all right. Awesome. So that has been our look through at the Death Watch and Space Wolf Codex supplements when the Death Guard and Blood Ain't Blood 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 Angels. Cut, restart, do the entire thing again from the beginning. Oh my gosh, completely over. When the Death Guard and Blood Angels come out next month, we will definitely be doing the same thing and probably spending a little bit more time, at least on the Death Guard one, because I'm very excited for no, that. No, you, you, you will out. be learning that one, and I actually want to know the Blood Angels for the Hobby Nights. Exactly, so exactly. So we will one. definitely be more up to date on those ones. But these have been really cool to look for through i am very excited to actually i actually really am probably going to look more into the space wolves i don't i'm not going to start like that kind of army or anything but they've always been a group that i've been interested in and now that i have their codex because i didn't i don't think we actually picked up the eighth edition codex for them i'm looking over at the shelf and i don't see no it. i don't see it we got the um we got dark Might angels be able to get on discount now. that's true but like this is really cool. I hope you guys have enjoyed the look through with us at these two books. Let us know in the comments what you guys thought. And I will see you all on Monday for a brand new painting video. Thank you guys again. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share. And I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.